Man, Sekiro sure is hard, but luckily they've just added an easy mode after all the complaining on Twitter. All I have to do now is turn my controller around, and as you can see, all the enemies die when I hit them just once. Thanks from Software, you're the best. As you likely know, there's a lot of talk happening around Sekiro right now, and how it's not only harder than the previous titles released by From Software, but also that it needs difficulty options. In my time playing Sekiro, I've noticed different ways that you could actually make the game easier for yourself in game right now. So before you go write that article or making a new mad Twitter post, here's my top five ways to make Sekiro easier. And number one, we're talking about those all important level up points. Sekiro hides the talent trees from you until you put some points in. So it's actually easy to go down the wrong path and be delayed in unlocking a really useful move or even passive. So let me cut that worry out and tell you some extremely important talents. Firstly, it's Mikiri. This talent gives you an extremely forgiving ability to step on the thrust attack of an enemy for a follow up attack or maybe just some nice posture damage. All you've got to do yourself is dodge into the thrust and that's it. The wind though to do it is really forgiving, even easier than a deflect for example. The next talent is Light, which allows you to restore health after a death blow. Any death blow. Having a lifesteal mechanic allows you to progress through new areas you didn't previously know by continually death blowing enemies with that HP restore. This will obviously save your life and give you more room to save your big heals for when you need them. Light is actually locked behind two tiers of talents though, so you'll need to grab Whirlwind Slash for one point, then Shinobi's Karma for two points, then find Finally, light itself for 5 points, which yes, is expensive in the early game, but let me tell you, it's worth it. Thirdly, and most importantly, is the Ashina Arts Tree, the third tree you're going to unlock at the start of the game. But you can entirely miss this, just like Josh did. To unlock the Ashina Arts Tree, you'll need to defeat the early game boss, Gyubu, then head up to the right, straight into the small tower littered with purple cloak bodies. Here, you'll find an extremely intimidating person, this old lady. You'll also meet Tengu, who asks you to hunt down some rats. The rats are actually right next to him. Just turn around and leave, exiting the gate of Gyubu that he was desperate to protect. My name is Gyubu Masataka Oniwa! Climb up to the right and there you'll find three rats that you need to kill. Once defeated, return to Tengu and he'll reward you with the Ashina Arts Tree. And this is where things really do get easier. You want the latent skills, they passively make you stronger. For example, some let you take less posture damage, some allow you to deal more posture damage. These are crucial to making the entire game easier. At number two, we're going to do a simple one. It's about the best item in the game, Ceramic Shards. If you're like me, an idiot, who thinks you can throw shards free hand without locking on, using it to make enemies maybe look away from you for a sweet stealth kill, well, unfortunately you're wrong. These things are useless unless you throw them directly at an enemy, and that always makes them look in your direction. So how you're actually meant to use these bad boys is to throw them at the enemy and draw them alone to your stealth spot. And the key to this is that you can actually do it while pressed up against a wall, which is something I missed for hours and hours of gameplay, which allows you to easily stealth kill any tough enemy without many of the previous risks. Eventually, you can replace these with a whistle tool you'll find later, but man, do these shards help in the early game, or maybe even when you want to save emblems? Number three is about the posture system. I totally didn't get how to abuse this system originally, but when I realized I started killing bosses when they're at 50% HP or even higher. Now that really helps. The system is very simple. When you fill the posture bar, you're allowed to death blow the enemy. Any enemy. What I didn't realize was that there's actually three stages to the posture bar. Healthy, hurt, and very hurt. You'll notice that the bar turns a bit yellow when the enemy becomes hurt, meaning their posture will recover slower. And it's now time for you to start looking for deflex or other posture damaging moves. Or you can go further and put the enemy lower in health, noticing the posture bar turning red. At this point, the enemy recovers posture much, much slower. And it's very easy to seek out that death blow now. Figuring out good ways to break posture, such as jumping on an enemy's head after a sweep, or that faithful move Makiri is great, but first, maybe punish with damage on these unblockables. Then, when they're in that weakened state, you're ready to go for that tasty posture break. Now their posture recovers much slower. And number four is the all-important God Seeds. Each time you find a new seed, you can then upgrade your God Flask to give yourself another heal. Now, when I reached the boss Genichiro, I had five of these flasks, while Josh only had three. So you can imagine how much easier the fight was for me because I had two extra heals whenever I needed them. So where did I get these seeds before I even got to Genichiro? From the shopkeepers you might find in the world. 
2 to be exact. The memorial mob are actually shopkeepers who reside near many fallen foes. You can often hear where they are because of the crows. <laughs> These guys loot the dead and then sell what they find, so maybe when you're next near a battlefield, have a look around, maybe you'll see some crows. It just so happens that this one here found seeds. This little tent guy right next to Tengu and the Gyubu boss fight area, he's just around the corner of the Tower of Tengu. He sells his seed <laughs> for a thousand sen. Then secondly, you'll find an ex memorial mob member trapped hiding from Ashina warriors at the Ashina Keep. Head up the Ashina Keep stairs and dip right. You'll see him down there just in front of you. He'll ask you for help if you can maybe clear an escape for him. So just kill all the Ashina warriors near him, then talk to him again. And then next time you're at the dilapidated temple, he's gonna be there. Not only is it very useful to have this vendor here in a convenient spot, but you guessed it, he also sells another god seed. This one's a bit more expensive though, it's 2000 sen. So you're gonna have to keep that in mind in the early stages of the game. These heals make everything easier, so save up if you can. Finally, it's my fifth and last tip, and that's that Sekiro actually has its own version of Illusion Walls. I know, I totally missed this originally as well. In previous From Software titles, you could find walls that were literally illusions. You just walk for a wall, suddenly be in a new area, and you'd find great loot. But naturally, very easy to miss. For example, this wall in Sekiro in the Harata Estate lets you step into a secret area if you press against the wall. It's right before the Lady Butterfly Chamber on the left. Indicated by this nice painting, you press against the wall and turn into the secret chamber. Then there's another in Ashina Keep. You'll need to clear out the samurai near the top levels. But when you know what these look like, it's actually quite easy to spot, it's right there. Both these chests had prayer beads, which leads to more health and posture every time you get four. So when you're missing these rooms and ignoring these items, you're quite literally making the game harder. And there you have it, my top five ways to make Sekiro easier. I hope this was useful. And if there's something you realize that makes the game easier, well then leave it in the comments. You might help someone, or even better, help me make another video. But finally, I'd like to have a small word in regards to the debate about Sekiro's difficulty. Should Sekiro have an easy mode? Should the creator of the game be forced to change his creative vision or even compromise it to allow the players more control over the way the game is presented to them? Well, it's my opinion that when an artist creates art, it's an expression and vision of theirs. It is not yours, it's theirs. And those that appreciate that art may be very happy and enjoy it greatly, but not everyone's gonna enjoy every single piece of art by every artist, and that's okay. No one can please everyone and no one should try to do that. For a regular player, this game was actually designed to be beaten by you. It might be tough, may be harsh, but it's fair. You can and will beat it if you want to. But for a disabled player, perhaps one whose reflexes are damaged and they can't react fast enough to ever experience the full game, it's not so easy. Every disabled person has a different perspective on life and all of its challenges compared to every other disabled person and every abled body person. There's a whole spectrum of disabilities that are nothing alike to one another. For some, Sekiro may be a challenge that they have to overcome. For others, it could be genuinely impossible. Should these players be forced to play the game on PC and wait for community members to provide suitable modding that allows them to then experience the game? PCs can be expensive. Community members may never create the right accessibility mod. What I'm saying here is that it's not so black and white as you might first think. At the end of the day, this able-bodied guy played a single player game and decided to cheat to beat the final boss. It isn't an online game. And so that affects me a grand total of zero. Although it's true this person isn't someone I would care personally to talk to about that boss fight in the same way that if we both saw a film and that person decided to skip the remaining 40 minutes just to see the ending, well then I wouldn't value their opinion on that film as much, but it really doesn't matter to me or them. Meanwhile, there's more than likely a disabled person out there who's unable to even try to play Sekiro. And I really don't think that's a good thing. As a commercial product, Perhaps the rules are different to an artist and their painting. But what do you think? I've been Hollow, you've been you, and I'll see you next time.